Hello and welcome to the fifth part of the AWS C Sharp tutorial. I'm very glad to have you here with me because today I will show you API Gateway Service. In our project, API Gateway will be used to call Lambda. So instead of directly calling Lambda functions, we're gonna have standard API endpoints and behind of them, Lambda functions. Everything is really easy when using the API Gateway AWS service. Let's find it in the AWS console by typing its name in the search bar. As you can see, here we have the main menu of this service. We can click the get started button to see how it works. Okay, here we have a menu for configuring our first API. We would like to use REST API and let's just for now use the example API that AWS provides. As you can see here in this JSON file, it will contain some information about pets. That might be interesting. Here we don't want to change anything, so let's just click import. Okay, it has been created. Here we can find the API structure in form of a tree. So at the top we have general get endpoint which provides the HTML file with information about our website. And below we have more specific endpoints to get the list of pets. Let's just try it out. We need to click the test button and in the second window the same. On the right side, we can see the response from our API. We have three pets here. Let's just take the ID of a cat and use it in the get specific pet endpoint. In order to pass the data to the API, we can use the path section. Here, just simply type two and we should get a cat, exactly as it is. Yeah, so you now saw that API Gateway is working just like standard API. Wow. Now the better part. How to connect it to Lambda functions? And to be honest with you, probably you have already saw the code. Let's just jump into the project. It's because the initial function is also using API Gateway. So if you have it deployed, you might already see it in the APIs list. I have just deployed it and here it is in the API Gateway service. It is the same function that I created in the second part of this tutorial. You might wonder why I haven't deployed it before. I had, but I'm always trying to delete the resources after finishing my work so AWS won't charge me for the usage of them. So let me explain you the code behind the API Gateway. Everything is located in the CloudFormation template. Generally, the basic type of Lambda is AWS Lambda function, but it does not provide the ease of adding API Gateway into it. So we are using AWS serverless function. It was introduced in the SAM, so serverless application model, which is an extension for standard cloud formation, but you can use it without adding anything to your solution. And the code for gateway is located here. So this Lambda will be triggered on API get event in the root path. Also at the end, we need to add to the output section the URL of our API. Outputs is a section where we define values that are accessible from outside of our stack. So like in this case, this endpoint will be available from Postman or web browser. But the output section also helps when you have each microservice created with its own repository, but you want to reuse some resources like for example VPC. If it's in the outputs, you can access it in any given stack on your AWS account. So as we do have our database setup, we can now write some code for the first Lambda. 
It will be more interesting to start with the get palette endpoint because we're gonna learn how to use API gateway to response and request objects. Let's just remove the unnecessary code that is here in the default function. What is important, we cannot remove the lambda serializer that is assigned to our assembly because without it, our lambda won't work. So only remove the content and the unnecessary comments. Let's now rename this function to get palette function. It will have one method because each lambda needs to be a separate class with one public method inside of it. I will call it get palette. It will return API gateway proxy response object and will take API gateway proxy request as a parameter. Because we are using the URL path to pass arguments, we'll need to extract them from the path. Each API gateway request have the path parameters dictionary inside of it. So a key value pair. Our key will be palette ID. So first of all, we can create an if statement. Inside of it, we'll check if path parameters is not null and if it contains some data, then we're gonna check if it contains key called palette ID. If so, then we'll try to parse the path parameter to a variable using integer parser. Of course, if something went wrong during the parsing of palette ID, we're gonna return new API proxy response object with assigned status code to it not found. Okay, so now we need to add some logic which will allow us to get the palette from the database. But as a good approach, we shouldn't put many code in the controller in the API. And the same goes for Lambda function. Let's create a palette service and assign the responsibility of getting a palette into it. First of all, I will add new project and call it inventory manager.bll, what stands for business logic layer. Inside, I will add new folder called services and here put our palette service class. Okay, here it is. First, we want to use DB context inside of it to be able to communicate with database. Of course, it's not the best approach. We should have some kind of repository for using DB context, but that's just a case for learning. It is not a professional business application. We want to inject it to the constructor. And here will be our method. It will return get palette response, so a new model that needs to be created. As it will be a microservice, we want to expose the contract models to public. So anyone who wants to use it will know what needs to be sent in each method and what he can expect to receive. In .NET World, for extracting libraries to be reusable, we can create nugget packages. So in case of microservices, our client will download Nugget package with model classes used in our microservice and will be able to also instantiate these objects. So for this case, I'll create new project inventorymanager.client in which we'll store request and response models. We can add the get palette response into the responses. It needs to be of course public. It will be just a data transfer object for our database model. So we can create properties based on that. We'll need to add weight as a decimal and size. So let's add one more class called size DTO. Inside of it, of course, width, height and length. We don't want to add here ID because it is not interesting for us. Let's go back to the get palette response and reference our newly created size DTO. Okay, here we have our model described. We can now map the database entity into it in the service. First of all, what we need to do is to fetch entity from database. 
So I'll create link statement on the palette's entities using single or default method for the given ID. Of course, we also need to include the size of it. Now we can do a check if the palette is null. If it is, we can throw an exception because given palette does not exist. I have chosen the argument exception with message palette with given ID does not exist. Next, we should take down this palette. I'll create another private function for it to describe it better. So a void function, which will take a palette as a parameter. And here, we would like to set the isPlaced property to false. Of course, in order to save the changes, we need to call update on the DB context and also of course save changes. After the action is performed, we can return in the main method new get palette response and just assign to the properties inside of it the given values from the palette object. So as the ID suggests, first the height, we can navigate to palette size using the size navigation property that we created, then length and width following the same approach. Okay, here we have it, great! Our method in the service is finished. Now, let's go back to the lambda function. First of all, as we decided to inject the database context to the service, we should now create the instance of it. So, a new object of type inventory manager context. Now, we can create the palette service and pass the DB context as a parameter into it. Always remember to add references to new projects, because without it, it wouldn't work. Ok, now we can create a new variable. Let's call it getPalettResponse. It will be created from the response from the getPalette function in our service. For a given palette ID, of course. So, here we have it. Let's now return API Gateway Proxy Response. Let's assign the status code 200 into it, which means OK. And as the body of the response, let's serialize or get palette response object using JSON convert class. It can be found in the Newtonsoft.json nugget package. So here is our first Lambda function behind API Gateway created. Now we can deploy it and see if it's working. But before the deployment, there is also one more thing to add. We need to go to the CloudFormation file and update the URI of the request. Here it is assigned to the path property. Let's just change it to get palette slash palette ID, which needs to be inside parentheses. And of course, the handler here is wrong. We no longer have the class functions, now it should be get palette function. And also the method name, which is the last element, should be changed to get palette. Now I think we have everything. I already have the resources stack deployed with the database, so only the main code stack needs to be updated. Let me open the command line and run the deploy.cmd file. Of course, it will take a while till everything is updated. Now it is deployed, but first we need to add a palette to the database in order to fetch it. Let's open Microsoft Management Studio. I have already prepared SQL statement to insert new size and also new palette. You can pause the video and rewrite it from me. Ok, I have just executed it. Two rows has been added. Let's perform a select on the palettes table. And here it is. So it has the ID equal to 1. Let's go to the API Gateway service and try it. In the main page of API Gateway, we can see our new API. Let's go into the get function and try to execute it. Ok, I will click test and it times out after 30 seconds. Why that happen? It's because the RDS instance 
into which we are trying to connect is inside VPC, so virtual private cloud. So our Lambda don't have access into it and is unable to communicate with the RDS. How to fix it? We can do it now quickly from the AWS console. Let's go to the Lambda service and find our Lambda. First thing that needs to be updated is the role. You can find it in the execution role box. We have already one role assigned, but it is missing the VPC permissions. Let's go into it. Now the IAM service opens. It was created in order to ease the process of managing permissions. So most of services have some permissions and they need to be sometimes adjusted in order to communicate between them. Like in this case with Lambda and RDS. So in order to add the new policy, we need to click attach policies. The list here is pretty big, but what is interesting for us is the VPC execution role. So let's type in the search box VPC and here it is at the bottom. Make sure that you have selected AWS Lambda VPC access execution role. Now just click attach policy at the bottom. And here it is. Let's go back to our Lambda. We need to put it inside our VPC, so our private cloud. You can imagine it like a box which inside of it store our private services and no one from the outside have access to it. It is located in the network section. You need to select the default VPC. If you are working a little bit with AWS on your own, you might have more of them here in the list. In that case, you need to check the number of the VPC, if it's equal to the RDS VPC. And here, just add three subnets that are inside this VPC. Also at the end, attach security group, in order to provide the access to RDS. Now we can click save, and at the top, you will see a green banner saying that everything went good. So now it should be working. Let's go back to the API Gateway service and try once again. Just navigate to the get palette endpoint inside the service, type one and click test. Yeah, it's working. Good job. Now our Lambda is fully functional. We did a pretty great job. We connected the Lambda with the RDS and implemented the API Gateway. That was really a lot of material. In the next video, we're gonna update our Lambda to automatically have VPC and security group assigned. So we'll describe them in the cloud formation template. Stay tuned and if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section.